uh, with uh, Professor of Surgery at Washington University. Good morning, Dr. Bradley Freeman. Hey, good morning, McGraw. All right, let's get uh, right to it. First, let's talk about this mosquito-borne virus we should be worried about. What's going on here? Yeah, so uh, unfortunately, I bring a lot of stories to you that uh, increase the potential paranoia of our listening yeah, audience. Including and, me, too. And, uh, including you and I, and, and this is one of them. So there is an outbreak of a mosquito-borne illness uh, that is called chikungunya, which uh, none of us had ever heard of before, uh, that uh, was initially described in Tanzania in the 50s. And, and this illness is a virus, and the virus infects mosquitoes, which is transmitted to humans when they're bitten. And it manifests itself by very high fever, a lot of fatigue, malaise, general uh, uh, feeling poorly, and very intense joint pain. And uh, it's rarely fatal, but people can be quite incapacitated for several days and weeks, and it's accompanied by a rash, and you know certainly could be confused with a lot of other potentially serious infectious illnesses. So to make a long story short, over the uh, decades, it's gone from Tanzania to Southeast Asia as well as Europe, and there's been a big outbreak in the Caribbean basin, and uh, so the, and it's borne by a mosquito that is very common to the Southeast. So uh, health officials are very concerned that people infected on vacation in the Caribbean are going to come back to the southeast United States and then transmit this virus to uh, the mosquito population in the U.S., and then it will be off to the races. So uh, there's no antibiotic treatment for this. There's no uh, vaccination with it, per se, and really the only defense is going to be very aggressive mosquito abatement uh, uh, measures, you know, such as DDT and, and all of the rest. So... Uh, I think this is something we will potentially hear about, if not this year, in the coming years. And I think once it's uh, in the southeast United States, we could certainly see it spread uh, further into the Midwest and something that we could be confronted with. And as you know, there's other mosquito-borne illnesses in the Midwest that we deal with, such as uh, West Nile virus and that sort of thing. So this is something to keep an eye on and, and, and uh, again, something to make us concerned about mosquito season. Doctor, a couple of quick questions here. How do you say the name of it? Chikungunya, and, and that chikungunya is a African name. It comes from the original African name, and it literally translates into that which bends up. And uh, the reason it got that name is that people, like I said, that they get this infection have tremendous joint pain or arthritis, as we'd say, and their joints become contracted and whatnot, at least temporarily. And so that's how it got that name. So it's an unusual name that's derived from the uh, original African description. Okay, chicken gun. You're saying somebody could, could go down to the, to the Caribbean, get bitten by one of these uh, mosquitoes, get the virus, come back to St. Louis, get bit by another mosquito here in St. Louis, and then the mosquitoes here would, would then have the virus and then transmit it to somebody else. That's correct. It's like, uh, so it's, it'd be analogous to malaria, which is not related to, but that's how malaria is spread and propagated. That's exactly right. So, you know, it would, it would infect the native mosquito population and then and then as that interbred, you know, it, it would, they would just transmit it back and forth. Okay, what about uh, West Nile? Uh, many people get sick and recover, but some people die. Are any people dying from this new one? Uh, to d death from this is extremely rare. And so uh, I think it's more of the morbidity, meaning you'd go to the doctor's office, you might go to the emergency department, you might be admitted to the hospital. And, there's, and I think the concerning thing, there's, there's things that you could confuse this with that would be much more serious, such as, say, Rocky Mountain spotted fever or West Nile virus. Or, you know, there's a lot of things that uh, would have this same constellation of symptoms. And so I, I don't think, while I don't think it would result in a lot of deaths, probably, probably no deaths, uh, it could be a tax on the health care system in terms of, uh, you know, just, just the burden of illness. Right, because if, uh, is it a deal? West Nile, uh, some people were already inoculated by it naturally, and so it only affected a small population. It sounds like if this, you know, if, if it's an outbreak, it sounds like hundreds, if not thousands of people could could um, come down with something like That's this. That's right. I mean, I think, I think it would depend on, you know, again, how effective, say, mosquito abatement is. And, and so I think if, you know, You've got enough uh, density, if you will, in the population of mosquitoes and the human population, you know, then it could take off, so to speak. Yeah. So I think it's just really one of those kind of basic public health measures that, that we know have worked for the last hundred years. Doctor, if you keep bringing us bad news, we're going to cancel the segment. I know. I hear you. I, I, like I say, I, I, I like to engender a lot of paranoia. <laughs> All right. We'll, we'll try again next week. Uh, Dr. Bradley Freeman, professor of surgery at Washington University. Great stuff, doctor. Thanks for letting have us know. Have a great know. day. You got it. Uh, chicken gunya.
Something else to worry about now. Chicken Gunya. Uh, interesting information. It's the first time I've heard anything about that, but we're glad he's here to at least give us a heads up. So we'll be on the market or on the lookout for Chicken Gunya. 829. Sounds like a gumbo dish, right, doesn't it? Chicken Gunya. Right? Oh, I had some Chicken Gunya last night. It was great. <laughs> avoid, avoid the Chicken Gunya. 829, Big 550.